So there are two things in operation. We are in an international prison. It's not just in America, but everywhere we go, our people are dying. So the things that are in operation on this planet is that white people want to kill us. I want you to understand that. They want to kill you. And it has nothing to do with what the kind of degree you have, what kind of car you have, what kind of title you have, what fraternity you belong to, what religion you belong to. They want to kill you because that is part of their plan. There are any number of reasons why they want to do that. I'm not going to waste my time trying to figure out why they want to kill us. But I know that's what they want to do. And they want to do it in many different ways. Psychological, economic, cultural, spiritual, social, and biological, chemical, electromagnetic. They want to kill you. The other thing is that there's only one nigger on the planet. I never use that word. This is the first time I've used it. I don't even think that word. But there's only one nigger on the planet. And the nigger that's on the planet is the one that is destroying the water, the one that's polluting the air, the one that is exploiting people and resources. And the only nigger on the planet is the white man and the white woman. And then our people are not niggers. We are imitation niggers. Now, what we have to do is we have to devise a system or a plan for ourselves. And I said earlier that each one of you is a system. And everything that you do, every thought that you think, either you are supporting white world terror domination by your actions, what you buy, what you wear, where you go, what you eat, how you use your time. You are either supporting the white people in their process of death or you're for African liberation. It's one or the other. And if we don't use our time wisely, then we are engaging in a form of subtle suicide. Because as I said earlier, their system is still going on. They still have these images on TV that are going on. They're still warehousing our children in the special ed, giving them Ritalin. There are no jobs. We fill in the hospitals. So their system is not stopping. And then finally, I want to say that we need one idea. And we're not thinking about a solution to the problem. We're dealing with all these other things, but these are diversions from the solution to the problem. And we have to start to think about a solution to the problem so that these young brothers and sisters who are here now, who are 15, 16, and 17, are not here 25 years later talking about these same problems. Now, how do I know that the white people know that we are going to come up with a solution to the problem? I know it because they have retina scans, they have what they call racial profiling, DNA banks, and they're monitoring our people to try to prevent the one person from coming up with the one idea. And the one idea is how we are going to exterminate white people because that, in my estimation, is the only conclusion I have come to. We have to exterminate white people off of the face of the planet to solve this problem. nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship right. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. But that is something that I must say to my people who stand on the warm threshold which leads into the palace of justice in the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. No. 
We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protests to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. And the marvelous new militancy which has engulfed the Negro community must not lead us to a distrust of all white people. For many of our white brothers, as evidenced by their presence here today, have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be, be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. When we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. <laughs> Must not lead us to a distrust of all white people. For many of our white brothers, as evidenced by their presence here today, have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny. And the one idea is how we are going to exterminate white people. 